Second uh, chapter 2. And last week, if you remember, we looked at verses 9 and 10. And um, we saw that in him we were a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his special possession. We are his elected, his living stones. Isn't that wonderful? And we were once a people. Uh, but that didn't know God. And then because of Christ, we've become a people of God, and we have obtained mercy now, being called out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Who remembers that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, at one time, we did not obtain mercy, but now we get mercy. And we were once living in darkness, now we are in his marvelous light. Today, we will be looking at verses 11 and 12 of chapter 2 of 1 Peter. And this is what it says. Chapter, uh, verse 11. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now this verse starts with the word beloved. Beloved. And I think you guys are going to all love this, because I know I did. Now, we have already learned about the other titles or pet names that God has used for us earlier in uh, the first two chapters. Uh, the elected, the royal priesthood, the living stones, etc., but now, God is getting a little bit more personal with us. We are being called his beloved, his beloved. And it is translated from the Greek word agapetos, and it is used 61 times in the New Testament. And it means to be divinely loved by God personally. Isn't that nice? Divinely loved by God personally. Now, it gets even better. The same word is used in Matthew 3.17 and other places, by the way, when God, speaking of Jesus, says, This is my beloved son. My beloved son. And in Romans 1.7, To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. See the connection here? You see this connection here? Like Jesus, we are beloved by God. And God loves us both in the same way. Try to wrap your minds around that. He calls us both beloved. And it's a divine love that we receive by being in a personal relationship with God. And the only way we get in that personal relationship with God is through Jesus Christ. And Peter is reminding these saints here of this truth in their time of uncertainty. For these saints that Peter's writing to here were in an area that was not their homeland. You know, we already saw it earlier in chapter one, and now he says it again in chapter two, that they were sojourners, they were pilgrims. <coughs> They were in a land that was not their own. And they were being persecuted for their faith. And at times, they must have just felt alone and afraid. How many of you felt that way when you've gone somewhere new and you don't know where anything is or don't know the people? Or, gosh, I've been here two years and I still get feeling that way at times. It's crazy. I still get lost driving around Maryville. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that is. I still do it. I think you're right here. Well, there you go. And so, anyway, Peter writes them, reminding that they are God's beloved. 
you are God's beloved. And how this one word here must have brought the readers of this letter comfort when they read this word beloved. Wow, I'm God's beloved. And isn't it amazing how just one word can bring comfort to us and blessings, right? You know, my grandmother was a master at this. I wish you all kind of met her. She was something wonderful. You know, and she would use words like adore or a darling, sweetheart, or angel. And she would say these words in such a way that you felt the love. I felt the love from her when she'd say this. Even the time she called me her big mutt, I still felt <laughs> love. From her. And for me doing this lesson, I have learned that I need to stop at times and really reflect on God's word. And when I'm reading it and studying it, to allow God's word to speak to me and know that whether I am reading his words of encouragement, which we all love to do, or correction, which isn't always so fun, much fun, is it? But they are his words of love for us personally. And so we need to really reflect on God's word when we are studying it and reading it. Back to verse 11. Now, the next thing Peter writes after beloved is, I beg you, or I exhort you. Well, I beg you is translated from the Greek word parakaleo. And it's, you know, it comes from two words, para and kaleo. Para means from close beside, and kaleo to call from being close up and personal. So by Peter writing, I beg you, he is saying, I am reaching out to you. I am reaching out to you as one who is with you, one who is close by you personally. Now, we know Peter isn't really right there with them, but what Peter is saying is like when we say, hey, I'm in the same boat with you. How many of you have used that term before? You know, I, I, I use it all the time. I'll say, well, somebody's telling me what they're going through, and I totally get it. I said, well, just wave over to me because I'm on the other side with the other oar, you know? I usually find that you hear it, and what they're saying is, they don't have a clue. Oh, yeah. So you got to watch out for that. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, I'm in the same boat with you. <laughs> and what Peter is reminding them of is that he knows what they are going through. Or he himself has and is experiencing the same things. He's just not in the same place. He's in Rome at that time, going through persecution. And Peter is one who has been there and continues to have the same struggles and persecutions, is pleading with them now do not give in to the flesh. Look what it says. Beloved, I beg you as soldiers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. He is begging them. He's pleading with them. Now, hey, I'm right there with you. This is what we need to do. We need to abstain from fleshly lusts which war against our soul. Now, when we read this word lust here, we automatically think of, you know, sexual things. But that is not the only use for this word, by the way. It can mean anything we have a strong passion for. A strong passion for. You know, some passions are good. You know, our passion for God is, is a great passion to have, right? You know, having a passion for his word, having passion to pray. Those are all great passions. But as we read here, Peter is warning about us giving into the wrong pleasures, the things of the flesh. In verse 1 of chapter 2, if you remember in our previous uh, lesson, Peter wrote about what, how we are to put aside malice, uh, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking. You remember all that? Yeah, well, those are all outward actions that we do towards others. <coughs> but here we are being warned not to be uh, feeding our flesh. We need to not do that. We need to abstain from it. And yes, sexual sin is one of those things, but there are others. Getting drunk, using drugs, watching certain movies or TV shows, overspending and going into debt, Right? Being overly passionate about a hobby or being part of a club, you know, those are uh, real things. 
real things. It's amazing to talk to people and they talk about some you know organization they belong to and it's all about that organization and like yeah there's no room for church or anything else it's just all about that and then there are those who are passionate about earning money yeah nothing wrong with making a living right but we all know that money can become dangerous the bible <coughs> warns us about this it tells us that the love of money is the root of all evil Many people like to misquote that verse, say, oh yeah, well, money is the root of all evil. No, it's not the money, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. And we are to abstain from fleshly lusts, because just as Peter warns us here, they war against our souls. Wars against our souls. And Peter, I mean, and Paul says the same thing in Galatians 5, 17, in, uh, Paul writes this to the church of Galatia. It says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. There is a battle going on in us all the time, if we're honest. And when we give in to the flesh, we often like to blame it on who? Oh, the devil made me do it. Oh yeah, the devil. That's an easy cop-out, isn't it? I'm saying that the devil's not active at times. But what does it say in the book of James? James tells us that we are tempted when we are drawn away by our own what? Flesh. Desires or flesh, exactly. You know, I love chocolate. Mm. Yes, I do. Mm. I love chocolate. And there are times I need to watch I don't eat a bunch of chocolate, right? And sometimes I abstain. I do really good. But other times, my flesh is weak. And it's not the devil. That's a weak it's my example. flesh that has to be. <laughs> this last week, uh, they brought in some birthday cake for somebody at work. And they put it in the lunchroom. Oh, David, did you try that cake? It's really good. Okay. <laughs> and it was really good uh, but the good news is we are told in God's word how we can win the war look what it says in uh, Romans 13 14. clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ and then in 2 Timothy 2 22 boy look at that like room 222, who remembers that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Out of a pure heart. Look what it says here we are to do. We are first to flee. We are to flee these youthful lusts and to pursue righteousness faith love peace uh, look at this next word wording here two words with Amen. those with those who call on the lord out of a pure heart you know when we are hanging out with the wrong people going to the wrong places uh, it makes it really hard if not impossible to flee from the things that war against our souls but when we are in fellowship with other believers, then we can encourage each other and pursue together the things of God. It's important that we all meet together each week or more than once a week if all possible, being involved with other Christians so we can um, have accountability to each other. And one of the reasons why is just as it says uh, here in verse 12 at the end, our second next uh, in verse 12 it says having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of his visitation according to this verse the non-believers are watching us looking for reasons to discredit our faith to make us out as evil doers. 
Sounds a lot like what's going on today, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, boy, somebody does something great, you never hear about that on the news, or about somebody's faith. But I tell you <coughs> what, how many times when some prominent preacher has fallen from grace, oh, yeah. it's all over the news. They can't wait, right? It's sad. It's sad. But if we are living our lives the way we should, be good examples of what it is uh, to be a Christian. And then just as it says here in this verse, that they may glorify God in the day of visitation. Meaning if we are being good witnesses of our Christian faith, there will be some. Some <laughs> will recognize it and realize, oh my gosh, I need what they have. And they become saved. But if we're living a life of hypocrisy, saying one thing and doing the opposite, not abstaining from feeding the flesh, then what kind of witness is that? I mean, if they only see us as one of them, you know, we're partaking in the same activities they're partaking in, there's, they, they see no difference. Mm -hmm. All we are doing is giving Christianity then a black eye. So our conduct as Christians should be one that brings glory to God. A lifestyle that non-believers would be ashamed if they tried to speak out against us. And that's always a good thing when that happens. They see somebody speaks out against you and then somebody stands up for you and says, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. That's a, that's a great thing. 2 Corinthians 8.21 says, Providing honorable things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Our good works should be sincere. We are to be doing them first unto the Lord with the right heart and motives. And when we do that, we will be doing what is right in the sight of men. If our works are for the Lord and we're sincere first, then our natural outpouring will be the same towards our fellow man. And by doing so, as I said a moment ago, some will come to faith in Christ. And it says, you know, glorifying God in the day of visitation. In the day of visitation. Uh, so it's kind of a... a an interesting wording here, or interesting thing that Peter penned right here. Now, what is this glorifying God in the day of visitation? Well, there's different ideas and thoughts on what this means. So I'll just tell you what I I feel personally, and I, and, and I think it means one of two things, and maybe they're both kind of one and the same. Uh, the first one is when a person comes to faith in Christ, they have had an experience with God, haven't they? And if their conversion is real, and, and, and it's a natural, the natural response then would be to giving glory to God. And you see that, you know, many times somebody, you know, has lived a life that's just horrible, and they tasted that the Lord is good, they've come to faith, and, and they give glory to God for their salvation. The other one is when... Um, my second thought is when Christ comes back for his church and we're all raptured, what will we all be doing? We will all be glorifying God. So if we're living a certain lifestyle and because of our lifestyle, somebody comes to faith in Christ, and when they're raptured with us, they're going to be glorifying God with us in that day of visitation. So those are my two thoughts on it. And or like I say, there's others. But I'll just say this to us all. So, here's that word, beloved. I love this word, beloved, now. Let us abstain from fleshly desires, staying in fellowship, holding each other accountable, encouraging each other as we see the day approaching of the great appearing of our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Living honorable so that others want what we have and give their lives to Christ. And with that, I want to tell you, in the weeks to come, uh, things are going to get a little bit harder in 1 Peter, just so you know. It's going to be hard for me to teach on. It's going to be hard for us to hear and learn about and apply to our lives. 
I'm not, I'm not pulling any punches here. So, read ahead. Read ahead in chapter 2 and chapter 3 and, and pray. Pray for me, pray for all of us that we can learn from God's word on it because we're going to be learning about submission, being submission to uh, those we work for, submission to our government, and submission to the people in our homes. Not easy. So anyway, pray about that. And uh, anybody have any uh, questions or thoughts on today's lesson? My wife's been dying to say something. <laughs> this is so crazy because this morning, okay, first of all, I have not been doing any art because there's always something going on. Well, I cleaned the office because we had company <laughs> and it's clean now. And so I'm getting in there, I'm watching the videos and all I want to do is paint pastels. It's huge passion. I want to do it all the time. I want to watch it on TV. I want to just, it can consume me. This morning I wake up, it's time for church, and I'm like, I want to watch another pastel video. And the Holy Spirit tells me, really, Doreen? You really want to do that first thing this morning on the Lord's Day? And I'm like, oh, okay. No, I don't. And I didn't do it. But see what I mean? It fit perfectly into this sermon because it's a real thing. Social media is the same thing. How many of us go to social media before we go to God's Word in the morning? Yeah. yeah. I'm guilty of that at times. But I have one more. Okay. You were saying, um, whew, pleading with you, do not give in to this, that, and the other, and put it aside evil speaking of yourself even. Okay. Because we, we hear all these messages, you're not good enough, you're weak, you can't do it. You know, this is just constantly flowing through our head. And these are evil speakings about your own self. And so don't give in to that. That is warring against your soul. Good so may we you. all continue to look at ourselves as beloved, special, loved of the Lord, priest, royal, elect, you know, okay. so much. Wonderful. Thank you. I, I like that. Thank I, you. Rick, I think you what some would say. No? Okay. Well, Maybe I kind of, kind of go along with the fact that a lot of times we talk ourselves down. Mm. That's true. Yeah. We talk ourselves down through our thoughts that we're incapable, but the thing is, is everybody in here do not all share the same abilities. Yes. That's why we're a part of the body. And when part of the body is telling itself it can't do it, it can't do it, it can't, it can't, you know, you're putting yourself down, you're letting Satan get in the mind. Yeah, that's true. That's or true. the thoughts that he puts in there getting in your mind. You know, I think if we got up in the morning and we start singing that song right away, it would help us. Um, Lord, it's hard to be humble. I get better looking each day. Oh, boy. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 how they slander you as an evildoer. Yeah. And just to show you how relevant it God's word is to the past and what they were saying against Christians back then and what they're saying now, the four things that they said they were being accused of rebellion against the government. Oh. Terrorism. Hmm. Yeah. How much have you heard of domestic terrorism? Right. Damaging trade or social progress. We're keeping the transgender channel. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. And leading in insurrection. Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, look at those four things that is, they were being accused of, and what he is saying to avoid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same old thing. Keep your behavior good so that you're not. Accused yeah. those four things. I thought, yeah, that's Whoa. exactly what they got accused of. They got, uh, and they got accused of that, and that's what is being 
Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, as they say, history always repeats itself, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. Okay, let's pray and uh, get out of here. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. Uh, just how true it is. And Lord, how it applied back then and how it applies today. So, Lord, just ask a special blessing on the beloved here, Lord. Be with them and keep them. And we just thank you that we belong to you in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.